And just before we get into the video, um, something I should have been doing a lot more up till now, and that is just asking you guys out there, if you enjoy what you're looking at, if you are if you like what I'm doing, go down below, uh, click on the, the like page, subscribe to my, my channel, and uh, by all means, please click on that little notification bell. If uh, that way you guys get, uh, uh, get alerted when I do get more new content up. I usually try to do the what's on my desk uh, monthly update beginning of the month and I usually try to get a video or a series of videos released um, by the 15th, the middle of the month. So whether that's going to be a uh, tips and tricks video or an aviation history video or my time lapse videos of the previous model builds that I've got done or uh, an air show video or you know um, some of my new product review videos I'll be doing so I'm going to try to get something posted uh, by the middle of the month so uh, please if you're enjoying this subscribe like and click that notification bell let's move on to the video welcome back everybody another episode of my uh, model product review uh, this particular model I'll be going over is the Tamiya uh, A6M5C0 fighter. Um, this is one of Tamiya's older kits. I wouldn't even be surprised if it was one of Tamiya's first kits. Um, the original molding for this kit uh, was from 1973. This particular boxing was from 2007. So we're going to go through this. Uh, well, like I said, as usual, we'll start with the uh, plastic, we'll move on to the instructions, the painting guide, and then we'll take a look at the decals. Uh, so starting with plastic, um, it is, as I said, 1973. So what is that? That's a 40-odd-year-old model, 50, 50, 73, 83, 93, it's almost a 4 or 50-year-old model. So I mean, it suffers from what can be expected from a kit that, that, is, that is that old. Uh, the main uh, limiting factor to a kit of this age is it has um, raised panel lines. Uh, so for Tamiya to have raised panel lines definitely shows you um, the age of the kit. However, um, considering the age of the kit, it does still have a number of engraved panel lines. So some of the panel lines are raised, some of the panel lines are engraved depending on where on the kit they exist um, otherwise it is a beautiful model I mean the detail is great even being raised panel lines looks great the fabric uh, areas of the aircraft have a slightly different texture so it'll actually look like it's fabric once it's painted um, the insides of the cockpits uh, still have uh, quite a bit of uh, detail in them uh, so you can still see it's got a lot of detail in here with some of the uh, cranks and wheels and stuff that you would normally see on the inside of an aircraft. Um, the lower wing is a single piece. Again, uh, quite a bit of detail for its age. If you look inside the main wheel balls there, um, you can see there's quite a bit of nice detail going on in there. Um, some engraved panel lines with some engraved riveting and uh, the details here on the wing for some of the rocket mounts. Uh, quite nice. I um, can't complain too much about it. Um, we'll move on to the other sprues and the other packaging. I have a feeling that the being the, the, the Dash 5 model, uh, a slightly later version, some of these parts here on this sprue are from a slightly later boxing. Um, as, yeah, there's no, they actually see, so this one is, you know what? I never realized that. They have... The dates on the back. So all of the sprues on here are copyrighted from 1983, except this one doesn't have anything written on it. Uh, but all of these sprues have a copyright uh, molded directly into the molding of 1983, uh, which means it is still a significantly older kit than I would have expected. This one's 1982. Uh, so you get uh, engine detail, nice separate and you can imagine getting a kit like this in 1982 would literally have been uh, the cream off the top. Uh, beautiful kit. The, uh, the cockpit uh, doesn't have quite as much detail as you would expect in a more modern kit. Um, the instrument panel face, I believe it's a decal, uh, it's pretty blank. Um, you do get quite a bit of um, um, crew members, pilot figures and whatnot uh, on the ground. So that'd be nice if you're planning to do a diorama. You got a couple of guys 
on the ground there. Um, I have to look up what some of these parts are in the instructions as a whole. Well, you know what? Ha! Those would be the bases that you glue the characters to. The, the six people, and you've got six bases. So that's what that is. Uh, anyways, you do have the seat, some nice detail on there. Landing gear, uh, nicely detailed. Your wheels. Um, again, your, your fabric on the uh, elevators are a separate uh, texture. So they look a little different when you uh, paint them up. Uh, landing gear doors. I mean, you can clearly see the age of the kit. There's just nothing on the inside. No detail and quite a bit of sink, mark, uh, sink marks you would have to, uh, and punch marks, you'll have to clean up and sand off. Uh, the inner doors have a little bit of detail, but the outer doors have absolutely none. Um, so, you know, there's be a little bit of work needed to, uh, to make this look decent. Uh, the cockpit uh, is nice, though. Um, let's see if there's a date on that. I don't see a date on the clear sprues. Um, but they are, um, you have two different options. You have one version um, of the cockpit uh, with the canopy closed and one with the canopy open. So giving you two separate canopies is always a nice feature for stuff like that. There's a random piece here. I have no idea what that's for. I'll have to take a quick look at uh, the instructions to figure out what some of these details are. So as I said, plastic, uh, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, some engraved panel lines, some raised panel lines. A decent detail, all things considered, for the age of the kit, it still holds up to a number of modern kits that are out there on the market. Um, I have two sets of instructions, and I don't know why. Okay, well, that makes sense. I have one set of instructions that are in uh, Japanese, and one set of instructions that are in English. Uh, and both uh, sets of instructions do have 1983 uh, copyrights on them so you can clearly see the age of the kit so we'll look through the English ones first and then we can compare and see if there's anything different on the Japanese ones um, so a pretty standard size Tamiya instruction paper um, instructions look very similar to um, to the standard Tamiya ones uh, there's a little section here on the left uh, telling you what some of the details um, in the cockpit that aren't included in the um, kit. So it tells you how to make the cockpit a little bit more um, detailed by drilling out some of the seat holes and using uh, seat masking tape to make the seat harnesses. And it points out some extra decals you can put on here in different places to make it look a little bit more detailed that isn't included in the main instructions. Same with the flaps. And it shows you how you can cut the flaps out and how to use some sheet plastic to make the flaps look a little bit more detailed. And in the engine, same thing, it shows you how you can use some wires to make some push rods and whatnot to make the engine look a little bit more detailed. Um, so uh, standard cockpit building, you've got your uh, canopy that goes together, uh, sorry, cockpit sections that go together uh, with your seat and your bulkheads and all that stuff. Fuselage gets glued together, headrests, um, your wings going together. Again, you have the option of um, putting these rockets on if you want, the underwing rockets. It shows you where to drill the holes. Again, if you choose to do the flaps, uh, how you can uh, cut out the flaps and glue them in the uh, down position. And then uh, the engine itself being put together um, as needed. Uh, step again, step uh, five, six, and seven here. So step five is gluing the wings to the fuselage along with the horizontal stabs in your engine uh, bulkhead. Um, and then step six is assembling your landing gear. And step seven, uh, gluing in your landing gear, your underwing, rocket pods. There's some other little, looks like bombs that can be mounted to the wing racks. Uh, tail hook uh, gives you the option for two different, either a hook or no hook. Uh, tail wheel, drop tank in the center being glued into place. Again, on the left here, gives you some details on how to make it more detailed um, by adding... Uh, brake lines, um, how to glue together your um, your rockets and your drop tank, and then the proper angle for your landing gear, making sure that you put your wheels in in the right angle and how it fits with the, uh, the gear doors and everything. And then section eight um, is basically the same thing, but with gear up, uh, what parts to use to put your gear in the up position and also with your same bits here, your rockets and bombs and tail hook. Uh, section nine is for your cow flops. You get two different options. You can have cow flops closed or cow flops open. Again, being a model from the 70s and 80s, this was an amazing option to have. Uh, step 10 
you're putting the engine cowl in the prop, um, the uh, cowl uh, kind of be on in place, and then the pilot if you choose to use the pilot along with your gun barrels and your pitot tube. So it shows you how to install all those pieces. In this section here, it shows you the different painting guides and how to paint up your uh, soldiers if you choose to use them, um, as well as putting the propeller together. So it's uh, quite a bit of a detailed kit for such an, an aged kit. And then while we're at it, let's open it up and see if there's any difference between... No, so the Japanese is effectively the exact same kit, just written in Japanese. Uh, marking guides, you get um, six different uh, marking schemes, um, and all of the basic same uh, aircraft with the... Um, dark green over the um, under sky color which is I don't even think it's like a light gray color I believe it doesn't really state what yeah so it's it's basically um, uh, the the Japanese green over Japanese gray and the flat black cowling props are red and then you have the different options actually I shouldn't say that there's seven because this is a separate set of markings uh, so it's quite a few, as I said, seven different options. A lot, I mean, basically the, the basic decals are the same, and then there's just some minor differences from aircraft to aircraft. So your first option here is from 332 Flying Group, um, Iwakuni Air Force Base, September 1944. Uh, the same 332 Flying Group based in Nauru Air Base in December of 1944. I'm apologizing now if I misspell some or mispronounce some of these. Uh, next one here is 316 Squadron 252 Flying Group from Kok. Kukubu Air Base, May of 1945. 303 Squadron, 203 Flying Group uh, from Kagoshima Air Base in June of 1945. Option 5 here uh, from 1 Squadron, 302 Flying Group in Atsugi Air Force Base, August of 1945. Here you get 203 Flying Group, um, Omura Air Base, 1945. And the last one here um, is uh, Jensen Flying Group from Jensen Air Base, 1945. So as I said, they're all basically the same green over gray, black cowling. Uh, some minor differences in the propellers. You got this one here is green. This hub's aluminum, red, brown, green, aluminum and red, aluminum with red, brown, and aluminum with red, brown. So each version has a slightly different prop spinner. And then the tail codes are different. Uh, there's a slight variation in camo pattern as well. Some of them are uh, lower down in the fuselage, others are a little higher. So you just have to make sure you check and uh, you're following the proper camo pattern for the aircraft you uh, decide to build. Uh, so, I mean, pretty simple instructions. It's a pretty simple kit. I mean, compared to a modern Tamiya kit, it doesn't really hold up to it. But for its age and the fact that you can get these for very, very little money, it uh, definitely makes up for it. So that's pretty much all that's included in the box. So let me just grab the, uh, the, uh, the decal sheet here and we'll take a look at what the uh, decals look like. So the decals, uh, there's not much to the sheet. It's all, like I said, a pretty standard. The vast majority of the aircraft use the same um, roundels. Uh, so the only real variation in the aircraft is with some of the tail markings. Uh, so you do get all your different roundels. Some have uh, white outlines, some don't. Uh, you also get these decals here, uh, these little red, uh, yellow, and blue lines. These are for your um, uh, landing gear doors. For, I'm not entirely sure why the Japanese aircraft had those markings on the gear doors. And then you've got all your different tail markings in here, for the different aircraft. One of them has uh, some American kills. So you have the markings for the shoot downs. You also have your info boxes for the different versions. And then your instrument panels uh, here as well. Uh, so the decal sheet itself is also copyrighted uh, to 1983. So it's effectively just um, a 2007 reboxing of a 1983 kit uh, with a new uh, box top. So not much has changed in the uh, effectively 30 or 40 years since this kit was released. Same instructions, same plastic same decals uh, but I mean considering it looks and holds up to similar models today uh, is very impressive and really shows you the effort that Tamiya put into these uh, back in the day. Uh, so that's the Tamiya Zero uh, A6M5 uh, as I said not a whole lot to talk about it's a pretty basic kit uh, but for its price uh, it is a solid solid model kit. So as always everybody thank you for watching we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching, guys, and as always, if you are interested in any of the content you see, you can access my website at www.shawns-aviation.com. Uh, you can see all the uh, latest pictures of aircraft and museums and the build logs of all of my current models and past models on that site. And if you're interested in any of this content, uh, please click the subscribe button here on uh, YouTube to follow more. Thank you very much, and see you guys next time.